Welcome to the first module of the HMM lecture notes. We're going to introduce uh, a new concept called hidden Markov models. And the motivation uh, comes from many NLP tasks in which one has to do uh, sequence learning, learning a whole sequence of things, not just classifying one thing. And in NLP, this is often called tagging. So let me just explain this with an example. So if you look at an n-gram model, uh, which is what we've seen so far as a probabilistic model of language, um, you could see that you can assign a probability to a sequence of words like this. So in a bigram model, you would generate British and then generate left given British and then waffles given left and then on given waffles, Falkland given on, islands given Falkland. So that will give you a probability of the sequence of words. And so if you want to score different types of sequences, so for example if you wanted to do spelling correction of the word waffles, you could for example score all the alternatives and pick the best one using argmax. But sometimes there is a notion of ambiguity where the words are fixed. Like in this case, uh, there is actually uh, at least a couple of meanings. Uh, one meaning is that the British left, so the verb leave, waffles. And so that's one uh, possible interpretation. And another possible interpretation which is probably where this headline actually wants to say is that the British left waffles or flip-flops on this particular topic. So in order to model this, you can't just look at the n-gram model because the n-gram model uh, will only make a distinction based on words. We want something that's not actually in the word, something more abstract. And one way to model this ambiguity is to use parts of speech, uh, like a noun, um, so the concept of a noun or a verb or a preposition and it's often called a part of speech because it's a category a category in which you can put different words and in this case you have the interpretation of the British left as two nouns represented as a, a sequence of noun noun and the fact that waffles is a verb is extending the sequence of the verb. So that's why this is called sequence learning. It's also called tagging because you're tagging each word with a part of speech. And the ambiguity is captured by this because there's another sequence of tags that can also be a valid tagging of this sentence. And uh, sequence learning is not just for tagging. So I'll show you another example. One, this one uses segmentation. And this is a, a familiar example uh, where we want to segment this Chinese sentence into words. But we're going to solve it in a totally different way. And we're going to solve it using a tagging approach. So we're going to tag each character with a special symbol. And the sp symbol B here represents the beginning of a word. And I represents that uh, a character is inside a word. So if I tag uh, using this tag representation, I can actually obtain a segmentation of the original Chinese sentence simply by putting a space wherever I see a B, for example. But uh, that's just for cosmetic reasons, right? So the tagging actually tells us already what the segmentation is. And now I can go ahead and translate these words into uh, English. So it's quite... Uh, so sequence learning can be very useful for many, many different NLP tasks. So it's good to understand it very well. So sequence learning works like this. Uh, we're going to study a model called hidden Markov models uh, in order to do sequence learning. So uh, the word British um, is so generated from this state uh, N. So you can think of this as a finite state machine, which has probabilities. And it's a probabilistic finite state machine built in a specific way. And then from this noun state, you can go to uh, a noun state, which is basically itself, right? 
so noun state goes uh, back into a noun state and then generates a different word left and then a noun state goes into a verb state generates waffles and preposition state generates on and then goes to a noun state generates Falkland and then noun state generates islands so there are three different states n v and p there are six observation symbols um, they call them observation symbols to generalize from words because sometimes they're characters, sometimes they're words, sometimes they could be other things. And each observation in this observation sequence, so 01, 02, etc., gets assigned to the specific part of speech tag. So 01 gets assigned to N, 02 to N, etc. And the state sequence is the same length as the observation sequence. So, as I said, this looks a lot like a finite state machine, but looks a bit different, right? So we're used to this kind of finite state machine where the words are on the edges, uh, on the arcs between the states. And this is called a Mealy machine, after a guy called Mealy. Uh, it turns out you can actually represent exactly the same information in a slightly different way. And from adjective state, you can generate a word crazy and then the transition doesn't actually have any words on and in this case the noun state generates killer and clown um, this is called a more machine and it turns out that these two representations are exactly equivalent and you can prove that although we won't do it here um, and so uh, HMM is actually a probabilistic version of the uh, the more machine over here okay um, So, this probabilistic finite state machine is defined in the following way. So, you have to start at a certain state. Just like in a finite state machine, you have to start uh, at some start state. Here, we give a probability. So, instead of saying you have to start at state number one, we say, well, you could start with a certain probability at any state. Uh, so, that's called pi. And the subscript i refers to the state. A transition from state i to state j is associated with this transition probability, a sub ij. And you should think about this as this conditional probability, p of j given i. So we're going to a state j given that we are at state i. But it's kind of wordy to say, write that down, so we're going to just say a sub ij. And the next thing is to uh, generate a symbol. O from state i and this is called the emission probability and this is written as b sub i and uh, this function notation b sub i of O um, and think of this as a probability of generating an O given that you're at a state i so you take transitions emissions uh, and that's how you associate words with these uh, sequence of states and there's two important conditions one is um, that all of the outgoing transition arcs from a state must sum to 1. And this is already implicit in the fact in this notation. right? So that actually says that every state j that goes out, uh, that you can reach from state i, all of those probabilities should sum to 1, which is why this is a conditional probability. And the second condition um, is that all of the emissions from a state must sum to 1. Again, this is concisely represented by this conditional probability. So here's an example of an HMM. Um, it has two states, A and N. And you can check that the two conditions that I mentioned are in, in fact satisfied. So if you see there's two arcs going out of A, this one and this one, and those two arcs have um, one-third and two-third, you add them up, you should get one. And the same for the outgoing arcs from n, you get nine-tenths and one-tenths, and if you sum that up, you should get one. So that's uh, confirming that it's a valid transition probability for each state. And the second thing is that it's a valid emission because crazy gets probability one, and because of that, everything else has to be zero. right? So that satisfies that condition that the emission should all sum to 1 from a certain state. And you can see that it's also true here. Okay. 
so if you um, so the thing that was missing from the previous slide was the start state probability how likely are you to start at a certain state well this particular probability distribution says it's equally likely you can start at a or n it's probability 0.5 either way here are the transition probabilities written down as a table here are the emission probabilities written down as a table and so on uh, so this is the emissions for the n so if you count these up uh, so there's four here for state a four here for state n there's four transitions for each state a and n so that's eight plus 4, 12, plus 2, 14. So these 14 probabilities entirely define this particular HMM. And that's most of where the action is going to be with HMMs, is figuring out how to get those numbers for these probabilities, making sure that they sum to 1, etc. So we want to make sure that this pi sub i sums to 1, that these transition probabilities are well formed, and the emission probabilities are well formed. So to summarize, in a hidden Markov model, there are n states. The emissions are observed. The observation sequence is given to us is O1 through O sub capital T. And there's a state sequence, which um, to be a very uh, pedantic it has to be sort of different from s1 because it's each x sub i is actually one of these n states right so but sometimes i'll play a bit fast and loose with the notation and just use s sub i for the state sequence but uh, to be absolutely correct you have to use the capital x so for each observation O i, you get x sub i, and x sub i is one of these uh, states, s1 through sn. And the important thing, the reason why it's called a hidden Markov model, is that the states are are not directly observed, especially in the test data. When you're looking at new data, you want to label them. The states are not observed. So um, this is going back to the original example you can see that these, uh, this is x1, x2, x6 for the observation sim, uh, sequence. And these are the three states, s1, s2, s3. Okay, so we're going to look at more aspects of hidden Markov models. Um, in particular, Hidden Markov models need some algorithms for them to be useful. So we're going to look at HMMs as a parser. So give give me the best sequence of states for a given observation sequence, assuming all the probabilities are given. You might also want to uh, just look at the probability of a given sequence. Um, so this is the HMM as a language model. And finally, you might want to learn HMM from data. And we can also look at algorithms to do that. That's the end of this uh, module.